is a fairly straightforward question. I give a set of functions to you, and the functions is this way. 1, which is cosine 0, cosine x, cosine 2x, cosine 3x, cosine all the way to infinity. Is the set of these particular functions orthogonal? I have to give you an interval, and in this particular case, I give you an interval from minus pi to pi. Okay? And I will also look at the norm of it as well while I'm at it. At it. One thing I want to highlight here is, if I want to solve this, uh, this is kind of a deal breaker because the rest of them seems like cosine of x, cosine of 2x, cosine of 3x, so I can say cosine of nx, right? You can put n is equal to 0, but that kind of changed things. So what I want to do is I want to do a two-case treatment in here. Let's say that one of the functions is 1 and the rest is cosine of nx. I'll evaluate whether that is orthogonal or not. Then I will look at the case like, let's say, cosine of nx and cosine of mx, whether those two are orthogonal as well, okay? So that's what I will uh, look at. As I mentioned, I kind of give you the hint, so I have to do this cosine of nx, and n goes from 1 to infinity in this particular case, okay? And if I write the definition, so this is going to be from minus pi to pi, this is my interval that is given to me, 1 times cosine of nx dx, okay? And okay, so I'm lucky in a sense that I have fairly easy integration to deal with. So this will be 1 over n sine of nx, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and evaluate this from minus pi all the way to pi. So if I write this, let me write this down. So that will be sine of n pi minus sine of minus n pi. So this is going to be 1 by n. What would be n? sine of n pi? So sine of, let's say that sine n is 1. What, what, do, what do I get? I get sine of pi. That is 0. What about I, n is equal to 3? Eh, well, that's the same point, right? What about n is equal to 2? Well, I get 360 degrees or 2 pi, right? So that is 0. So regardless of what the value is, I get this guy to be 0. For the similar logic, so if you think about this, right, um, you know, pi is right here. So negative pi and positive pi doesn't matter. So simply you're going here versus there, right? So at the end of the day, this will also be 0. So I get myself 0 minus 0. So this is 0. So this checks out, okay? This seems so far, this is orthogonal. But it is not good enough for me to say that this whole set of functions is orthogonal. I can only say that if there's one of the functions is 1 and the rest is some type of a cosine, nx, then I will get myself orthogonal in this particular interval. That's very important. Okay. Now I will attempt to solve the other case where you will see that um, I have to differentiate cosine of nx and then the other one I'm going to call the cosine of mx. Obviously m and n are arbitrary uh, you know, uh, letters that I picked. It just simply says that they're not the same. Right. That was the whole point of checking the orthogonal so now, okay, so let me go minus pi to pi. I'm simply replicating what I did in the previous step. Cosine of nx, cosine of mx, dx. Okay, so what's up with that? How am I going to take the integral of this? Actually, what I'm going to do is I will take a note over here, and I would like you to memorize this because we're going to see this a lot in the um, Fourier transform. Cosine of alpha times cosine of beta. If I multiply this, this is 1 by 2 cosine of alpha minus beta plus cosine of alpha plus beta. Okay? And I'll give you a hint from this. You kind of know this if alpha is equal to beta, right? So cosine square of x is equal to 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2x. You remember this most likely. So this is what's coming from. This is much more generalized than that. I will write the other ones as well. Sine of alpha times sine of beta will be one half. So far, common. So far, common. So far, common too. Now it's not common. Minus cosine of alpha plus beta. Okay. Now, um, as my exams are closed book, um, sometimes students confuse this. You see sine times sine, but these are cosine. Right? It's not sine, sine. Just want to highlight. Okay. So let's do one more. Sine of alpha times cosine of beta. One half, so far is fine. See, so far, now it is different. Okay, I'll have a sine alpha plus beta. So the point may, being here is, if I have the same cosine, cosine, or sine, sine, I always get cosine, all right? 
you can see the sign is different though, plus versus minus. But if I have a sine cosine or cosine sine, I get a sine sine. So memorize this, uh, you're gonna need it, trust me, on this one. So now I will go back to answering this very question. Okay, so let's do that then. So I'm gonna have myself integral from minus pi to pi. So I'm simply gonna write one, one half. I'm simply copying from here, basically. When I see alpha, I'm gonna put mx nx cosine of m minus n x plus cosine m plus n x. So that will be cosine, let me see, cosine times cosine times dx, that's it, all right? So the question is, uh, can I take the integral of it? Oh yeah, I should be able to take the integral of it. So I can take out one half. Um, so the integral of this will be one over m minus n sine m minus n x plus one by m plus n sine of m plus n x. And I do go ahead and evaluate this form again, minus pi to pi, all right? So now, um, some of you may have already seen that this will be zero, but I will explain in a little bit depth. So look at this, m, and m minus n, can I call this, I don't know, k, right? Because m is arbitrary, n is arbitrary. The only thing is they are not the same. So I'm gonna call it k, right? So now it goes back to this. It's like n, but this is k. So it's the same thing, it would be zero. From the same logic, in here, it's the same as well, m plus n, we call it some other letter. So that will be zero too, okay? So you can see from here that both of this, this is zero, this is zero, so I will get myself zero. So they, these turn out to be orthogonal, okay? Um, is this a coincidence? Is this like an arbitrary example? Now well, wait for it, wait for it. This example that I sold has a lot of implications coming up soon in this several videos. I would say like two, three videos, it will be very relevant. Orthogonality of cosine. While we are at it, why don't we go ahead and find the norm? Um, obviously I have to evaluate this twice because one is, let's say that n is equal to one, right? So then I will have this phi zero, because that is what it is, right? If you think about it, cosine of 0x, right? Um, so I will get myself, well, 1, comma 1. Okay, so let's write the definition of the inner product there. So it's going to be minus pi to pi, and I have myself 1 times 1 is 1 dx. Okay, so then if I take the integral of it, I'm going to get uh, squared it off. Well, that's going to be x, right? x. This is going to be pi. This is going to be minus pi. So you can see from here, if I pl plug x, I'm going to get pi. If I plug minus pi, I'm going to get minus pi. Pi minus minus pi will be 2 pi. But I have square root over there as well. So the norm for n is equal to 1 turns out to be 2 pi. Okay? And did you realize that? I gave that point uh, in the previous uh, video. You know, I didn't cancel the square root and, you know, there was a square, you know, one square, right? So I didn't cancel it and you can see it's a 2 pi, right? So something to note. And for all the others, if n is not equal to 1, right, so then it's going to look at cosine nx, right, that's what it's going to look like. So now I'm going to evaluate that particular case, I'm going to call it a general n, and that will be square root of, now cosine of nx, cosine of nx, so that is what I'm going to inner product of, right. Note that this is the same, it's not n and m, right, that's how I obtain the norm, I take the inner product by itself, right. So this may require something, so let's write it in a general. Minus pi to pi. So this is going to be cosine nx times cosine nx dx. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, well, I'll go back up here, right? Because I might as well, I told you this already. Why don't you use alpha is equal to beta and call it n, right? So that we can get this. But you already know, some of you know cosine squared, what it is about, right? But, well, let's do it. Cosine of nx times cosine of nx from that formula will be one half of cosine of n minus n, which is zero x plus cosine of two nx. So what is this? One. Okay, so then I go back and insert it over here, the square root of um, integral minus pi, two pi, one half, 
1 plus cosine of 2 and x dx square root. The first thing is I have to evaluate this integral before I do the square root. So that's going to be 1 by 2x plus 1 over 2n sine of 2n, right? Very similar to what I've been doing so far. And again, I'm going to evaluate this from minus pi, and this is going to be pi, and at the end of that, I'll take the square root of it. Okay, let's not forget the x here, I, I forget it. Okay, good, so sine 2x. So let's plug it in. So you're going to see square root of will stay over here, 1 half will stay over there, so this will be x is pi. What is going to be sine 2n pi? 0, right? Pi minus 0, that will be the first one. And the second one is going to be, I'm going to put minus pi, so the x, minus, so sine of 2 and minus pi. Again, we discussed this many times, this will be 0 as well. So again, we have the square root, and then when all said and done, what I'm going to get is uh, pi minus minus pi is 2 pi by 2 is pi, square root of pi. Okay, so you can see in here that the norm is different. So this is 2 pi if n is equal to 1. For all others, I'm going to get the norm is square root of pi. Thank you for watching this video.